Hey everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker HD. I'm Zelda Master and here we are on a ship. The pirate ship so we can make our way to the Forsaken Fortress and save our sister. But we have quite a ways to go so might as well wait patiently, right? Until we make it. Okay, this is boring. I can't sit here and wait. And actually, you're not meant to wait. I believe if you speak to any of these guys, uh, they will tell you what to do. So, hmm, that Nico didn't make out half bad. With you being a, the new Swabby and all, new Swabbies always get stuck doing the hardest work. It's a real raw deal. But hey, I'll tell you, it sure sounds like Nico is happy to finally not be at the bottom on the rug of the pirate ladder. You bet he is. Hey, but don't sweat it. I'm sure you'll do fine. So as long as you don't disobey him. So yeah, he is telling us to go speak to this Nico guy, and he's apparently the rookie or the swabby or whatever that uh, you know sucks compared to the other pirates. Or so he's just you know new to all of this, and it's weird how fast it is turning night. But either way, we're gonna have to do this little thing with Nico to continue on. But I can't help but point out this character's design. He looks exactly like. E glad from or E gad rather not glad but E gad from the Luigi's Mansion series. I mean, right? I I, I kind of feel like it. Except, um, one of his lenses is broken. But the whole twirly thing going on with the lens, yeah, looks exactly like him. Plus, he's holding a book, and I mean, I'm sure Nintendo is referencing him in a way. But the rest of these guys, uh, just they look like you know pirates, kind of. If you look up here, I just want to go ahead and show them off because we're not really on this ship too much throughout the game, and it's nice to take it in. I don't know, I just love this game and its HD glory. Look at that, just sailing the seas, taking a smell of the salt water. <sighs> kind of smells like a candle, but that's because I'm in my room and not outside, but whatever. The candle smell is just as fresh as the Great Sea. So your name is Link, right? <laughs> That's one weird getup you got on there. Uh, so what's the deal? Is that popular back on your island or what? Now that I think about it though, I think I've seen an outfit like that before somewhere. Oh really? How so? Yeah, these guys are more important than they may come off. They're not just pirates, but enough wasting time. You know, I don't want to sit here and just interview all the pirates. I mean, there's really no point. I mean, there's one more here if we speak to him, but stop right there. This is Miss Tetris Cabin. Most of us real pirates aren't even allowed in here. There is no way we're letting an outsider in. Don't you even think it. Wow, okay. Why don't you chill out? I bet you're not even uh, allowed there either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, I had to add the laugh track back because honestly, my jokes suck. And, uh, you know, you guys said that the laugh tracks somehow work um, and make what I say funnier. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and bring them back uh, occasionally because I can imagine I'm getting really annoying. So, don't worry, I heard you guys. And, uh, yeah, I, I, if you guys find it funny, then I will. But, anyways, uh, oh, well, ahoy there, Swabby. As of today, ahem, I am your superior, Nico. Now, I promise I'll go easy on you. So do as I say, okay? Right, alright, so he's gonna go through this whole little game you're gonna have to play. And, I mean, they already told us that we should go speak to Nico. So this is the newest recruit, you could say, of, uh, of the pirates. And he wants to teach us this little game about swinging around and... Yeah, he's gonna think he's a professional at it, because apparently this takes a while, and when you really do consider it in reality, I mean, kind of swinging from one uh, thing to another, one of these uh, torch things that are hung up, like one rope to another from platform to platform, it sounds honestly pretty difficult. <laughs> like, this in reality would be too hard to do, but in this game, I mean, it's just, you know, a click of a button, a... Uh, uh, you know, that's it. You know, it's really that click of a button and you can do it. So, yeah, this won't be too hard. Uh, I'm assuming the game thinks you're going to struggle because you might fall. It's just kind of hard to balance. But, I don't know, I feel like the controls for this game are really solid. This and uh, Twilight Princess HD have amazing controls. I love playing with the Wii U Pro Controller. It's actually... Eh, you could say it's it's my favorite controller out there. I prefer it more than the classic. It's literally like the classic. I feel like it handles better. Uh, a lot of people tend to tell me the PlayStation 4 or even the Xbox controller is better. I guess it's just preference. But, you know, I'm a Nintendo fanboy, and there we go. We did it. So, what? You did it already? Yeah, we did. 
But yeah, so I just prefer the uh, Wii U one. Plus, I have my own custom Pro Controller with my Zelda Master logo on it, for those who don't know. Uh, yeah, I got it, like, custom-made, uh, sent to me. I believe I made a video about it, but whatever. Okay, so we did it. We were able to complete this little thing, and now we get ourselves a treasure. Yeah, Nico is so surprised, and you were also actually supposed to, uh, reset the timer by hitting a switch over there, and then repressing this one to have these things come up, because the platforms are only up for a certain amount of time, but I used Nico's time, because, yeah, you, you don't know how to do anything, so, uh, yeah. You suck. I mean, look at you. You look like, you look like a bootleg Naruto. <laughs> I mean, he honestly does. Look at the whiskers. I know. I can't help but get that impression. I don't really watch Naruto, but uh, it, it just—it seems like it's too much for me to get into. I'm already into DBZ, so that's enough. Uh, you know, of really long never-ending shows kind of but uh, so yeah we got the spoils bag this is gonna allow us to get us uh, I don't know it, it's it's gonna be helpful later on okay hey link we've reached the forsaken fortress hurry up and get here so yeah the second you finish we're able to leave so how does it feel to be a rookie Nico I just beat you yeah <laughs> Uh, but there's still so much I have uh, to teach you. This is so lame. Yeah, right. I bet whatever you would have taught me would have been dumb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what an idiot, man. I totally showed him. I mean, I did it first try. I'm so proud of myself. It's not like I played this game a thousand times. And... <laughs> Yeah, okay, so I played this game a thousand times. Maybe that's why I know how to do this little platforming thing. But onward to Tetra. Here we are. It is now nighttime. Check it out. We have all the pirates ready, and yeah, Tetra's here. So hey, Link. Hey, I'm up here. Up here. Okay, let's go ahead and head up there then, because uh, yeah, we need a better view of the fortress itself. You, we can already see it, uh, and it looks... It looks scary. I love the way the, the fortress comes out with the ship, you know, half of a ship on the very top as, like, the main area. So, what were you doing with Nico? Uh, we were playing a game? Don't tell me you were playing some stupid game for treasure, were you? No? How'd you know? Okay, uh, well, whatever. There's something you need to see. Have a look over there. That's the cursed isle known as the Forsaken Fortress. Dun dun dun! Yeah, it's right there! Oh my god, and you can see the bird that snatched our sister. There's all sorts of strange rumors about this place. What I know is that as long ago, it used to be a hideout of a no good group of pirates we used to compete with, huh? But they were just small time. Now the place looks like it's pretty dangerous. Ah, I knew it! Look! Over there! By that window! Have you ever seen so many seagulls flock like that before? I'll bet you anything that that's the place where your sister is locked up. It's so crazy how they were able to figure out that our sister loves gulls from just seeing her, f like, for two seconds before she got kidnapped. But yes, uh, it's a really good observation uh, because, you know, somehow Ariel attracts gulls to her, so we know where she is now, but it's really well guarded. So, this won't work. We've been spotted before we got anywhere near landing there. Yeah, we would be spotted. Hmm. What do we do now? Uh, uh oh. I don't like that wink. It, uh -oh. oh my god, I'm in a barrel? What happened? <laughs> yeah, I feel like the game wanted me to add that one, but. <laughs> Look, don't struggle. If you want to get into a dangerous place like this, this is the only way to do it. Trust me. We pirates do this all the time. Don't worry about it. It'll be a piece of. Okay, I, is everybody ready? He is ready. <laughs> and the, the noises make links is so hilarious. I love it. I believe like, so, like on new grounds way back, there is like this beat based off of those grunts with like, you know, different colored links. And it was hilarious. But never you fear, kid. We're pros. We're going to launch you good. Three, two, one. Blast off! 
And <laughs> bye bye, they say. Yeah, okay. This is not gonna be a smooth landing. As you can tell, oh, right into the wall. I have a feeling he would have most likely been killed. But, you know what? This is kind of like a cartoon. And uh, the only thing that fell out of him was his sword. And he ended up fine, luckily falling into the water. So here we go. It is time, my friends, to take on the Forsaken Fortress. I love how we're introduced to this so early on within the game. It is, uh, it is interesting, and it is kind of frightening because you're already going to tackle the first area within the game without a weapon. As you can tell, we don't have one. If I spam B, I can't use it. It's gone forever. So anyways, uh, what is that? <laughs> the sound effect also. Hooah! But anyways, your sword landed all the way up there. Shoot, I'm sorry, I apologize. I guess my aim was a little bit off. Uh, a, a little bit? Talk about really off, whatever. <laughs> look at the, uh, look at your face, priceless. So yes, Tetra can speak to us through this little uh, stone, and this is known as a uh, stone. I, 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 I don't know. Pirate's Charm, that's what it is. And uh, yeah, it's apparently supposed to be known as uh, an enhanced version of the Gossip Stone. So if you played previous Zelda games, that might sound familiar to you. But anyways, uh-oh, I do not want to be caught. Am I? No, okay, okay, I'm not. So yeah, if these searchlights do catch you, uh, you will be thrown in a jail. But it's fine. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I guess show off the easiest way to do this because I feel like overall this is really easy to get done. I will get caught because honestly getting caught is kind of like a shortcut to do certain things. Uh, Tetra is going to try to use her pirate charm to speak to me and tell me what to do, but I already know what to do. So we may not have a weapon, but we're going to find these Boku blends running the searchlights and the second they see you decide to pick them up. I mean because they're not really using them anymore. I mean they're trying to fight us now. So to fight this guy, don't you worry, we got chicken bones, we got all the types of delicious food that you can use to attack your enemies. I don't know how this is a chicken bone, this is way too big, but hey, I'm gonna call it that. And there you go, we have completed the first guy. Bon appetit everybody, here's your chicken bone, oh yeah, there we go, we did it, okay. Anywho, now that we have killed one of these guys and reduced a searchlight, uh, then, then we're, we're doing pretty good. We're doing pretty good progress. There's actually one over here as well. To get to it is a little more tricky. As you can see, it's under there. So how could I do that? Well, you just kind of want to walk all the way around. But now that I've taken out the first searchlight, might as well get caught. Um, so I can grab a bunch of goodies that you can get within here. Because this is 100% and I want to get them. And actually, before I do that, rupees! Yes! Give me this! Give me that! And I got caught. What do I do? Uh oh! Hands up! Don't shoot! And you get thrown in the jail. There you go. Alright. It's not my first time being thrown in the jail. Okay, that's a stupid joke. Okay. Come on. What are you doing? If you start wandering around and play the baba bee bab. Okay. Yeah, I, I, it failed. Like the, I don't know, the, these pirate charms, the reception's not that great. I'm in a prison. I, I couldn't hear what Tetra was trying to say. I'm sorry, guys. I had to skip over all of that because it was just... It, it, I couldn't get it. But yeah, this is how you escape the, um, the prison. I mean, who knew the security was this crappy? <laughs> they throw you in and you're locked in, but you find the jar that has a hole that perfectly takes you outside a different prison. Not like inside another one. No, this hole doesn't connect to inside one. That would be hilarious if it did, but no, it connects to outside. But now that we have done that and we escaped it, we can re like explore this area. And it's funny because you kind of want to get caught to grab this. I mean, you don't have to. You can come in from a different side. It's just a lot easier. So I like suggest getting caught. And here we got the dungeon map, which is going to be very, very helpful. I'm going to pause to show it off. Um, as you can see, you just kind of go around in a circle. Uh, we just came from the little prison, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. So I just need to investigate every single area. And I believe once we do have the compass, the map will show us where the searchlights are. The remaining ones we have yet to uh, turn off. But uh, let's go ahead and throw this, step on this switch, and there you go. That's how you open up these prison cells. And now we're going to save our good friend, Chest. Hey, Chest! How's it been, buddy? Uh, you just... Chilling like usual cool. Okay. He doesn't really want to talk to us because um 
it's a chest, but guess what we're gonna get in it? We need ourselves something pretty valuable if you couldn't tell by how the chest looked it had spikes It was a lot more pimped out than the other ones. And that's because it did hold a piece of heart Now that I've done that might as well Go back up here and the easiest way to do so is honestly just getting caught I would not waste time trying to maneuver past this here um, Hey, buddy Hey, buddy. Okay. And we got caught. All right. Hands up. Like, you just don't care. Wave them around in the air. There we go. And we're back in. <laughs> All right. So, we've been thrown in twice, technically on purpose, just so we can kind of save time. And now that we've done that, and oh, a yellow rupee. Yeah. I believe this was the first game. No. I actually I don't know. I think this was the first game to have yellow rupees at least first 3d zelda game and by 3d i just mean like the home console uh ones like this because uh, i keep forgetting that four swords adventures was also only a home console zelda game but um it doesn't play like these games at all it plays like the handheld ones which are you know much different uh, in a way but Okay, so I guess now that we've done all of this, we can uh, we can go ahead and start turning off the remaining searchlights and just get on with this and also locate the other things we need to locate. So I believe over here, we are going to find where we started originally. So yeah, wherever you get thrown in prison, you can just kind of backtrack like that. Uh, I guess that's another way to look at it. So you really never really need to be thrown in. I just kind of prefer doing it because I don't want to... Deal with it. Plus, I want to show off what happens when you do get caught. So, yeah, this is where we originally were, as you can see. But, um, anyway, I don't know why I decide to walk back. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, but, okay, now, you know what? I should honestly have my gamepad out. That's one thing uh, that I would say I don't... No, no, okay. I do like this about the Wii U version, that the gamepad is there and you can always look at it especially when you're selling the great sea something that was very very common in the original gamecube version of the game was having to hit the up d-pad button look at the map for a brief second make sure you're going the correct path and then put it back down that's when selling the great sea which we have yet to do but i'm sure a lot of you guys know what i'm talking about also we got the compass now i think that's all there is when it comes to collectibles so i'm not going to worry about collecting anything else i'm going to focus on the last two searchlights i need to put out but as I was saying, yeah, so the map may be extremely convenient, and I do like it for what it is, but at the same time, it, it gets really annoying. And, uh, um, because you just always have to have your gamepad charging out there, and if you're not using the gamepad, it's just, it's another screen. Um, but I mean, I guess you can look at it as an, oh, it's nice, it's convenient, I don't have to have the map on my screen, which I guess could be. But yeah, here, as you can see, uh, you need uh, some sort of shortcut. The box will create a shortcut, you could say. But uh, once again, at Tetra, trying to call me, trying to hit me up on my pirate's charm, but I ain't about that right now. I am busy, and I got to, uh, I gotta go ahead and chuck some jars on some, some employees. Hey, who hired you to do this? Well, it doesn't matter, because you're dead. Ugh. You're never gonna get your next paycheck, buddy, because by the time... Yeah, by the time I'm done with you, you'll be a check. <laughs> uh, okay, I, I really don't know what I'm... <laughs> I'm trying so hard to make like the corniest jokes at this point. But... Yeah, we got ourselves a joy pendant, which will be a pretty helpful collectible. And now I think all that is left... I'm going to go ahead and pause so I can show you the last searchlight that is up. Is that one. But to make it to that one is a bit different than the other ones, it seems. So, um... We're gonna go ahead and uh, make our way up here. Kind of go around this whole area. I, you can't even see the map right now, so that was kind of stupid for me to do that, but whatever. Also, I just realized, what is what is this symbol? This looks like both of them are put in, like both searchlights are like crossing each other, kind of like what, what they do when we start to attack them, like when they're not searching for enemies and stuff. But uh, I believe, uh, okay, so this is going to be very helpful, of course. It creates a minor shortcut as well. Uh, but it's not, it's not like it matters. There are no searchlights around here, so we're good. 
And now that we have that done with, I believe there's nothing really important here, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it off. I don't know, the, the game has to constantly show you these little shots so you can understand what's going on. And then you have on top of that, Tetra constantly whining. But now that we have cleared this side, if I were to continue on, it would have taken me to the next area, but I don't wanna go to the next area until I activate the searchlight, of course. So to do so, we're gonna start going this way instead of the opposite way and then i'm done and then I'll, i should be good and we finished the forsaken fortress um like i said i don't think it's really difficult this is the first area within the game but what usually happens is i have my map closed so i completely lose all sense of direction like i am now and i just started going the opposite way again uh when i just said i wasn't gonna do that so I need, I need to make sure I look at my gamepad a little more often. It is honestly, though, pretty convenient to use. It's just, yeah, I, I, I don't know why I keep forgetting to look at it. I'm used to just having the map displayed on the screen, which when you really think about it, I don't know which one would be necessarily more convenient. Um, I guess it would be more so preference, but I think this is the one, right? It didn't really show me a shot, so this might not be it. But this doesn't look like one I've taken on, like a searchlight I've closed. And it isn't. Okay, so there we go. The final searchlight that we need to take out. If I pause, you can see I'm already on it. And the other two uh, are disabled. So, hey, buddy. Take this. Ugh. I don't know why I call these guys buddies because you're not my buddy. I'm going to chuck this at him. I love chucking. <laughs> I, I just love the fact that you can use other weapons. And, I mean, I can't wait to have this in Breath of the Wild, but on a much larger scale. Cause I mean, as we know, and yeah, this was a little shortcut by the way, but I'm not gonna use that. I believe, yeah, we literally saw how this whole thing was panned out and how we were supposed to make it to this. But, anywho, as I was saying, um, yeah, honestly, like, I can't wait to see Breath of the Wild and how they're gonna have, cause I replayed and I played the demo and I've gotten like, Boku clubs, I believe that's what they're called. So they're essentially like the just drop items enemies have, kind of like what I'm picking up with these weird chicken bones that I'm using to attack enemies. So yeah, it's just so much better that I'm gonna be able to keep it in my inventory. And I believe this box here is kind of useless. Uh, what I do know though in this game, you can break the giant crates you're not meant to break. So like the shortcut boxes, like the one over there. Um, if I go ahead and use my Okay, well, I'm, too, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like grandma right there. I can't really see what's in front of me. But yeah, this one right here. This solid snake is not in it. But this box. And it, whoa, look, it like focuses as you zoom in. This is really, really nice. Like, I did not know how good uh, this feature was. Like, as I zoom in, it blurs. And then it, like, loads in the... Okay, this is ugly. Never mind. Uh, some, some of the areas don't look that good, but whatever. Uh, but as I was saying, yeah, with all of the Breath of the Wild and um, uh, how it's going to be like this game where you can pick up drops from enemies, like weapon drops, and then use them. But instead of only keeping it for that area and having to drop it, uh, you get to keep it in your inventory, which I'm so excited for. So like maybe like one of these spears will be obtainable, and then you can have Link use a spear. I mean, they did show in the trailer Link using a spear, so... Uh, I'm sure that will be a thing eventually. Um, I really hope the rat doesn't come here. See, this, this area is pretty simple as well. You just kind of want to get past this one. I mean, I just suggest kind of moving quick. Uh, you know, being a quick guy. Nah, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, man, that was close. But it's fine, the rat is gone. Yeah, the rats can actually tip over your barrel. And if they tip over your barrel, you essentially get caught. And, and, and they love doing that, by the way. They love tipping over the barrel and, 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 and having you exposed to the moblins. And I don't want that. I really don't. I don't want to get caught on per. I don't want to get caught on accident, rather. You know, I think if I did, I would be, um, I'd be a fake fan of this game, right? No, I'm kidding. Okay, so let's see how well I can do this one. This one's also pretty easy. You just kind of want to, don't even acknowledge that he exists like act like you're trying to speed run or just trying to be quick spam rolls and make it to this area because instead of having to use a barrel and slowly walk it would take way too long but just in case you're afraid of getting caught or afraid of screwing up or anything you can create a shortcut to avoid all of that by using this box let's push it down and there 
I mainly want to do all of this just so I can set myself up uh, for something later on. I mean, these boxes aren't necessary, and I'm most likely never going to come back or use the box. It's just, I, I, I don't know, I'm a completionist, and I have to do all of the small stuff like that. But, all right, so, now with that done, it's time to slide. I love the way Link looks here. The faces, I mean, I don't know, the faces he makes is hilarious. I believe this was the very first Zelda game Nintendo gave expressions to Link, like facial expressions, because if you look at Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, Link had no facial expressions, it was just the same face. Uh, unless it was in a cutscene, sometimes he would do the, uh, like, you know, the, the surprised face. But, um, aside from that, it was really nothing more. Uh, what is really cool about this game is, yeah, literally uh, everything. This, as you can see, he is really upset and trying to be careful. If you go down, he's still, <laughs> he's still super upset. He has no neck now, what is this? Oh my god, Link is hilarious, but yeah, alright, it's time to go, alright. And our sword is right here. <gasps> hey, look, he's happy now. <laughs> okay, a little too- Link, ch chill out, man. You're a little too happy. The, the game is not over. Your sister's not saved. We didn't come here to save your sword that you came here with. Like, you're more happy seeing your sword than I bet you will be seeing your sister, but speaking of swords, we can use his sword! Yes, his giant knife thing, and, and whack him, and also chuck it at him and miss, because it's really heavy and hard to manage. But, uh, there you go. The music is so nice, too, when fighting these enemies. It has, like, this western feel to it, I don't know, like, the, the way it sounds, sounds like it's, it's getting serious, you know, I'm gonna pull out a gun from my holster. It reminds me a lot of, uh, it's like a western setting, and, which I do like a lot. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of just the whole western settings and stuff, and that's why Twilight Princess is my favorite game, because it's very western in that way, and it reminds me of just, like, old times. But, uh, anywho, we are in the area where our sister is. <gasps> also, there's a couple other girls. They all have pointed ears as well. I mean, obviously, because, you know, they're all getting kidnapped. <gasps> hey, you're not that excited. I mean, you were way more excited earlier with your sword, but what is happening? Uh-oh, yes, he is back, the giant bird. And its mouth is glowing. What did it eat? It must have eaten a lot of light bulbs. <laughs> Get it? That does not make any sense, but whatever. He grabbed us, and he's most likely going to eat us. Uh-oh. Yeah, everything just glows in this game. The HD remake, I love the lighting, how, like, everything is just in your face. It looks so sharp and good. I can't get over it. Even though I'm playing this for like the fourth time in HD, I'm, I'm still always amazed. But wait a second. Yes, that looks familiar. The music is familiar. We all know who this is. 